What's up guys, Jads here, and in this video I'll be talking about the new biotech expansion for RimWorld. So biotech adds a ton of new content that can be roughly divided into three larger categories, mechanoids, reproduction, and genetics. Because of the sheer amount of content this is, I've decided to split it into three videos, and this video is going to be covering the mechanoid content. So let's get into it. As predicted, Biotech adds a ton of new mech content. The core of this content is a new item called a mech link, which can be installed into your pawn's brain, and the pawn can do this themselves, it isn't an operation. The mech link allows them to maintain a mental connection to mechanoids and thus control them. People with mech links are called mechanators, or mechanator, I'm probably going to alternate back and forth in my pronunciation, I haven't decided how I want to say it yet. The new mechs and accompanying technologies are locked behind new research. To conduct any mech research, you need to first have a mechanitor in your colony. So how do you get one? Well, Biotech adds a new starting scenario called Lone Mechanitor, where you land with just one person who already has the mech link installed. You'll also land with two mechanoids already linked to you. If you choose to do a normal start, however, you'll have to acquire a mech link. These cannot be crafted, they can only be harvested from the dead body of another mechanitor. In a normal start, before long, you'll get a notification of a derelict ship on your map. You can attack it, salvage the transponder from the wreckage, and then decrypt it at a research bench. Doing so will trigger a quest. The quest will most likely be that an abandoned mechanitor ship is in orbit, containing the dead body of a mechanitor, and some number of functional hostile mechs. If you accept the quest, the ship crash lands on your map tile, and after defeating whatever mechanoid threat emerges, you can harvest the mech link from the corpse. It can then be installed into your Mechanitor of choice. Once you have a Mechanitor in your colony, a friendly starter mech will crash at your colony already linked to your Mechanitor. In our case, we got a cute little Constructoid, more on those shortly. Once you have a Mechanitor, you can begin that mech research. The first tier of this is Basic Mech Tech, which only requires electricity as a prereq. Basic Mech Tech unlocks five new buildings, which you can find under the Biotech tab. Three of them are Basic Mech Equipment, the subcore encoder, which is a workstation at which you can craft basic subcores. A subcore is basically the brain of a mechanoid, and the complexity of the mech determines the complexity of the subcore needed. Thus, only basic cores are required to create new basic mechs. Then there is the mech gestator, which is a workstation at which you can insert these subcores to build new mechs. And then the mech recharger, which is a charging station for your mechanoids to use. They can also self-charge without one of these, but it's at an absolutely glacial pace. This tier of research also unlocks four different mechanoids. The Agrahand, which will help sow and harvest crops and has some weak melee capabilities. The Constructoid, which will build things you lay the blueprint for and has a small cannon on it for light defense. The Lifter, which is meant to be a hauler and can only defend itself with weak melee and the Militor, which is a basic battle mech equipped with what is essentially a shotgun. All of these mechanoids will do their various jobs around the base as long as the Mechanitor linked to them is alive. You can also draft them and control where they move, as shown here, as long as you're within a certain range of your Mechanitor, and they're in a sound state of mind. You can use the new Mechs tab along the bottom to see the status of all the mechs in your colony, including their energy levels, their group, which we'll talk about in a second, whether or not Pawn should automatically repair this mech if it gets damaged, and you can even tweak their accent color. So we have our Mechanitor here, and when he's selected, we can see down here some new options and information. Bandwidth determines how many mechanoids the Mechanator can be linked to. The default is six slots of bandwidth. Naturally, more advanced mechanoids take up more bandwidth, but basic mechs only take up one bandwidth slot each. So my Pawn can link with six basic mechanoids by default. I've built a few, so we're linked to five. You can increase this bandwidth two ways. First, through crafting a wearable utility item that increases bandwidth. At the basic mech tech level, this is the air wire headset. Wearing this will increase bandwidth to nine slots. More advanced levels of mech tech yield more advanced utility items to increase bandwidth even more. The second way is to build a new structure called a band node unlocked with basic mech tech. This can be tuned to a specific mechanitor and will increase their bandwidth by one slot you can build multiple band nodes. Now, mechs that are linked to your Mechanitor can be divided into groups called control groups. This is useful because you can set control groups to different tasks, working, escorting, which is following your Mechanitor around, or recharging. So for example, you could put your lifter and constructoid in group one and assign it to work, and they'll go around doing their tasks, but put your Militors into group two and assign it to escort so that they stick close to your Mechanitor acting as bodyguards. By default, a Mechanitor can only have two control groups. 
However, just like with bandwidth, there are ways to increase this. At the basic mech tech level, you can craft a utility item called a control pack, which when worn will increase the number of possible control groups to three. More advanced levels of mech tech will once again yield more advanced items to increase the number of control groups, even some implants to permanently increase the number. After you've researched basic mech tech, the next level is standard. You'll notice in the research tree, however, that it requires something special to unlock, similar to the tech prints required for various implants in the royalty expansion. In this case, it's studying a signal chip. How do we get this? Well, we need to defeat a higher tier mech, kind of a mech boss, and when they die, they'll drop it. Unlike in the base game, where we might need to wait for a quest to give us this opportunity, we can trigger this ourselves. You select your mechanitor and can summon a mech threat. There are three kind of mech bosses or commander mechs essentially of increasing difficulty. Each have different requirements to be summoned and you can see here that currently the only thing we have the capability to build out of all these requirements is the comms console to summon the Diabolus. So let's do this real quick. And after a dramatic battle that I'm not showing in its entirety, because I may or may not have won it using dev mode for the sake of this video, the Diabolus drops the signal chip. You can now study it at the research bench and you'll find that it unlocks the ability to move up to standard mech tech. The standard level introduces five new mechs, three of which are combat mechs, including the all too familiar Pikeman and Scyther, along with the Scorcher, which launches incendiary attacks at your enemies or in this case, a heal root plant. <laughs> there are also two worker mechs, the Tunneler from Mining, which has a smoke pop ability, and a clean sweeper, which will clean your base. Thank God for that one. <laughs> With new mechs comes new necessary equipment. You'll need a larger size gestator to grow them, along with larger rechargers for mechs at this tier. And since these mechs aren't basic, they require more than a basic subcore made from steel and components for a brain. These standard mech techs need a standard subcore, which is made by scanning the brain of a person at this new workstation, a soft scanner. This won't harm the person, but it does leave them sick with scanning sickness for a while, so this tier of mech has a little bit of a higher cost to produce. This tier also has some bandwidth increasing equipment and tech to increase your mechanitor's number of control groups. When you feel ready, you can call the next boss, the War Queen, using this mech band antenna. Defeating this boss will be necessary to acquire the power focus chip needed to advance to high mech tech. Now, the War Queen is especially lethal because she can create new mechs mid-fight. These little mechs are small but can easily overwhelm due to their sheer numbers. Once the War Queen boss is defeated, she will drop the power focus chip. You can study it again. I'm now free to research high mech tech. This tier unlocks six additional mechs. Four of them are combat, including two different centipedes, a lancer, and a Diabolus, that type of mech leader we previously defeated. It also introduces two new worker mechs, a Fabricor, which will craft things for you, so it's practically priceless in my opinion, and a Paramedic. The Paramedic mech can rescue downed pawns and treat their wounds. It can also put out fires. It even has a built-in fire foam popper. This tier of research also unlocks, yet again, new accessories to increase bandwidth and number of control groups for your mechanitor, along with two new implants that enable your mechanitor to repair damaged mechs remotely and shield them remotely. The new mech booster item increases the efficiency of any mechs working within its radius. Lastly, I should note that these higher tier mechs require higher tier subcores. Basic and standard won't cut it. To craft these, you'll use the freshly unlocked RIP scanner. This also requires a scan of someone's brain like the soft scanner, but unfortunately it destroys the brain in the process. So these mechs come at a high cost of one human life per mech. <laughs> it's getting a bit dark. Finally, when you're ready to advance to ultra mech tech, you can use the mech bandish to summon the Apocriton leader. Defeating him allows you to study the nano structuring chip that he drops, unlocking the ultra mech tech option in the tree. Ultra mech tech introduces only combat mechs, five of them. The Centipede Blaster, the Centurion, the Legionary, the Tesseron, and the War Queen. It also unlocks a Mech Lord suit and helmet that each increase the wearer's bandwidth. Now, this is a lot of new and exciting tech. There is a downside to it though, pollution. I really like the new pollution system added here. It works like this. Gestating new mechs and recharging existing mechs produces bags of toxic waste called toxic waste packs. Now, when these bags deteriorate, they pollute the surrounding area. 
So if you leave them outside or indoors in normal temperatures, they will eventually deteriorate away to nothing and your map is gonna slowly become polluted. You can see polluted areas using this new pollution overlay in the bottom right. Exposure to pollution will naturally cause toxic buildup in your colonists, unless they are genetically altered to thrive off of pollution, but we won't be discussing the new xenotypes added in this video, one thing at a time. So back to the toxic waste packs. If you accidentally let some deteriorate, you can clean up the polluted ground using a pollution pump, but doing so will just generate the waste packs again. It doesn't get rid of the pollution, it just removes it out of the ground. One option is to keep them frozen in storage indefinitely. However, you'll probably rapidly run out of space to do so. Another way is to burn them, but this produces a new substance called tox gas. This gas is super harmful to ponds, at first just irritating, but over time can be lethal. Because of that, you can now make tox gas weapons using your toxic waste, including tox grenades, a tox pack, which slowly releases tox gas when triggered, tox shells, and even a tox bomb launcher, which is exactly what it sounds like. Eventually, you might research the waste pack atomizer. This will allow you to get rid of your toxic waste once and for all. Lastly, there is a new generator type, the toxifier generator. This will generate electricity mm, seemingly from nothing, but pollute the area surrounding it. So this concludes my video looking at the mech related content in the biotech expansion. If you've been playing with biotech and utilizing the new mech content, let me know your opinion of it down in the comments. So far, I actually think this is the best expansion yet, and that's coming from someone that usually doesn't get into the high-tech stuff in RimWorld. So if you are on the fence about whether or not to get it, or you're a newer player debating which DLCs to invest in first, honestly, I say this one. Stay tuned for my next biotech video, which will be looking at the next key thing added by biotech, reproduction, so children, babies, and all that jazz. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.